every time I'm working on a device and I use a thermal camera to troubleshoot, viewers ask, what thermal camera are you using? And when I tell them the model of the thermal camera, they then ask, is there any cheaper alternative? I'm currently using FLIR E60. It's 320 by 240 resolution at 60 frames per second. 320 by 240 resolution. That's around 76,000 dots that are being sampled 60 frames per second. And that's what makes this device expensive. If you are looking for a thermal camera, you need to ask yourself, why do I need the thermal camera? Do you want to use it for surveillance, to monitor people at night, or do you want to use it to inspect maybe buildings, your wall, your roof, your living room? You want to see what's hot and you do not care too much about resolution, or do you want to use it to troubleshoot circuit boards? If you want to use the thermal camera to troubleshoot short circuit on motherboards, then low resolution is not going to work for you. The reason is, let's say there's a short circuit on this side of the board, on this area of the board, okay? I mean, a one inch by one inch area can contain hundreds of components. These components are super tiny. They are microscopic. We're talking about size 1001 SMD components, 201, 402, 605, 603, 805, so on and so forth. These components are microscopic. If I point a thermal camera that has a resolution of, let's say, 80 by 80, then the thermal camera is going to show us a heat spot maybe that big. It's not going to pinpoint you to the component that is getting hot. The reason is the thermal camera is limited by its resolution. The higher the resolution, the more focused the camera can be on the component that is getting hot. When I use my FLIR E60 to check for a short circuit, the camera, the thermal camera, can pinpoint me down to the component that is getting hot. But using a lower resolution camera, let's say 80 by 80 or 24 by 24 or whatever the case may be, then the heat spot is going to get bigger and you're not going to be able to tell what is getting hot on the board. You will be able to see the heat spot, but you're not going to be able to tell which component is getting hot, especially when you have a crowded board like the one that we have here. That's resolution. Now, if you want to use the thermal camera for surveillance and maybe you want to put a thermal camera outside your house so you can monitor if there's anybody walking out there, then you do not care too much about resolution because you just want to be able to see a heat spot, the form of the person, and you do not care about seeing the details of the eye and the mouth and the nose and stuff like that. So lower resolution is okay for that purpose. Same thing if you want to use it to monitor a roof or maybe you want to use it to monitor insulation. You have your house insulated, but you feel like there's cold air coming from somewhere. You can point your thermal camera and then you can tell if your insulation is good. You do not care too much about resolution, but when you are working with circuit boards, you care a lot about resolution. What about the thermal camera refresh rate? How does that work? And why is it important to have a thermal camera with a high refresh rate? If I want to give you an example, let's say you have a window that overlooks a nice view, the mountain, the sky, the field outside, and you have a curtain. You can close the curtain to block the view, open the curtain to look at the mountain again. Close the curtain, block the view, open the curtain to see the mountain and the sky again. Now, let's say you can close and open the curtain in one second. Close and open, one second. Close and open, one second. What are the chances that you're going to see a bird flying by when it takes you one second to close and open the curtain. Maybe by the time you are closing the curtain, the bird already passed by. You open the curtain, you're not going to see any bird. Bird is already gone. How does that relate to working with circuit boards? I work on short circuits a lot. You see me working on short circuits every single day. Let's say we have a short circuit on this MOSFET. I inject voltage at the shorted area of the MOSFET so we can see what gets hot on the board. Sometimes something flashes on the board quick. If the thermal camera does not have a high enough refresh rate, I'm not going to see that flash because by the time the thermal camera refreshes, the flash is already gone. A few days ago, I was working on an iMac where a MOSFET was flashing quick. If it wasn't for the high refresh rate of the camera, we would not see that MOSFET flash quick. Refresh rate is extremely important when working with circuit boards so we can visualize everything in real time. So since the naked eye can see 60 frames per second, it cannot see more than 60 frames per second, and your TV is 24 frames per second, I would say a minimum to consider would be 20 frames per second. That would be a minimum. If you want to go for a thermal camera that would show you 8 frames per second, 7 frames per second, 
I think you're going to end up just not using that thermal camera in the future and you're going to end up paying for a good thermal camera anyway. So why not save and get yourself a good thermal camera to begin with and something that will last you years to come. That's all I want to say about the thermal camera. Now, one con, one thing I do not like about FLIR is the company. FLIR is all about the money. FLIR want to charge you a premium price for anything that you buy from them. Recently, I had to change the battery on this camera and the FLIR battery sells for $149. $149 for the battery and this is not a standard battery that you can buy from anywhere the shape of the battery is unique to the thermal camera 178 149 149 149 for a battery I wanted to see what's going on inside this battery so I did open up the battery just to see what's that technology that is bringing the price up to $149 and you know what I found two cells and a tiny circuit board right here. That's it. $149 for this here. Okay. I looked online and I was able to find a third party battery and I bought it for $60 rather than pay $149 for the battery. And the battery is working fine. Now, the reason I bought a replacement battery was because the battery was not taking a charge anymore. The battery came to a point where it was not taking a charge anymore and I cannot operate the thermal camera if it does not have a battery. If I plug just the power cable, the thermal camera is not gonna function unless we have a battery inside, which is sad. I mean, a camera that expensive, I should be able to operate it using the power cable only. I should not have to have a battery in order to operate it, but that's the camera. I got the battery, I put it inside the thermal camera and it was charged about 80%. Great. I used it until the battery drained down to about 10%. And then I plugged the power cable so I can charge the battery. And then I realized that the charging port is bad. The charging port was not charging the battery. Now, I do not have the luxury of time to figure out how to open the thermal camera and fix the charging port. So I thought to myself, why not go online and search for an external battery charger? I plug it externally, I charge it, and then I put it back inside the camera. Maybe I can have two batteries, one inside and one on the charger. So I went online looking for an external battery charger. And again, external battery charger from FLIR, $184. I see one for $135. I do not know if this one is for the E60, but these are the prices, 233, 184, 135, 129. Luckily, I was able to find this guy here on eBay who actually made his own external charger. He made the design and this design is 3D printed. I can tell. It was done via a 3D printer, but it's functional. Okay, I do not care how cheap this is. The charger is functional. It fits the battery perfect. When you plug the cable here, the LED turns red. When the battery is charged, it goes back to blue. I mean, the guy did spend the time to make the design and the circuit board inside. And kudos to the guy. He deserves every dollar from that $55. I'd rather give him the money than give Flair $180 to buy their external charger. Now, one thing that I'm most pissed about is when I bought a replacement RCA cable. The FLIR camera comes with an RCA cable. One end connects here, and the other end connects to a video output. In my case, I connect the RCA cable, yellow, white, red, to a box with a HDMI output, goes on to the HDMI switcher, and that's how you're able to see my FLIR cam on video. So that cable went bad. I had to wiggle that cable back and forth to get an image. But what I did was I went to Amazon and I bought two cables. I said, I'll use one and I'll keep one as a spare. When the cables arrived, I plugged the cable in and I was not able to see an image. So I thought maybe one of the two cables are bad. I used the second cable and same problem, no image. And I thought maybe my jack went bad, the connector went bad, that's what I thought. So I put the old bad cable back in and I wiggled it back and forth and the image came on the screen. So I knew the problem was not the connector. The problem was the cable, but that's the same cable. It's the same RCA cable and all those cables are standard. Yellow, white, red. Why would that cable not work with the thermal camera? So with trial and error, I figured out that FLIR is playing some tricks. They switched the layout of the tabs here. So now if you look at this box here, Red is connecting to yellow, white is connecting to red, 
and yellow is connecting to white. And I figured this out myself. I knew Flair would play tricks like this so they can get you to buy the cable from them. That's a standard RCA cable and there's no reason why Flair would want to switch the layout of the cable other than wanting you to buy their own cable, which is $26 compared to two cables for $7. Another overpriced item. And one other overpriced item. Let's say you lost your charging adapter. If we go to Amazon here, this charging adapter is selling for $134. Are you kidding me? $134 because it says Fleur on it. $134. So that's what I do not like about Fleur as a company, but I can tell you that they make excellent products. And if I am to buy another thermal camera in the future, it would be the same exact thermal camera that I'm using now. So that's it for the thermal camera. Let me know what you think. We're going to end it right here. I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Leave a comment if you have any questions. And we'll do something else in the next video.